Dan, would you rather us introduce a new kind of type of episode to the Business Angers podcast, or would you rather us just keep it the same as we always do? I'll go with new type of episode. Okay, that's good, because if you didn't go for that, this would have been a very short one. <laughs> you would have. Yes. We've got something new to bring to the Business Anchors. We're hearing from, I think, seven business founders today, wow. as well as Lloyd and Dan Nelson, great business founders. Um, and we've got a concept called Would You Rather? And do you want me to explain how that works, Dan? Yeah, how does it work, Lloyd? So you ask questions that start with, would you rather? And then we answer them and share our thoughts. Interesting concept. Yeah, but this is kind of business founder, entrepreneur, would you, ra would you rather? So we're going to have scenarios where you've got to pick one or the other, and we're going to discuss what we do. And I'm excited. We're hearing from people like Harry Hugo from the Goat Agency, a massive business that's been recently been acquired by a massive corporation. Um, Chris Cubby, who runs a great social media agency over in Denmark. Yes. Right? And business anchors will be happy about this. We are hearing from the Mark Knowlton. What? Yes. Mic drop. Father figure to most of the business anchors out there, Mark <laughs> Knowlton. Um, yeah, and a few others. So, um, yeah, should we get into it? Yeah. So, firstly, <coughs> firstly let's do a big cough sorry and then uh we're going to introduce let's start with chris cubby this question's quite topical so we asked chris cubby from cubco if you had a kill switch for ai right now would you hit that button or let it play out as it is now and see where things go so let's hear from chris usually i am the first guy to like get all in on technology and get behind it and say, you know, this is going to improve our lives. We don't know where it's going to go. Look at the car, look at the internet, look at all these things. Everybody said that they were going to hurt us, but they ended up just improving our lives, but, you know, also had some drawbacks as well. AI is a bit different for me. So AI to me feels like we are putting somebody above the food chain. So we're putting a technology above us in the food chain. Uh, that I think is going to completely disrupt the way that we live our lives. And I think a lot of people are going to lose their jobs. I think we are not prepared for that massive switch and it's coming so incredibly fast, more, you know, faster than any other technology ever in history. So I would absolutely press that kill switch and just not look back. So that actually surprised me. Yeah. From Cubby. Um, uh, yeah, so he's saying right now he would press that kill switch to stop the progression mm. of AI and just kind of go back to life before um, AI. And I do think that obviously why I started with that, AI is a massive thing in business right now mm. and it's affecting a lot of business founders and entrepreneurs. People are kind of having to switch up what they're doing and think about it. Um, but what did you think of that answer? I think that was really interesting. I think he does raise a good point. I, I think personally, I wouldn't hit the kill switch. I feel like um, what's needed is more regulation mm. around the use of AI, but I think it's going to help society in so many ways that uh, I think it'd be better to, to let it play out, but with more regulation. I feel like now there's next to no regulation, so anything can happen. Like mm. I, I'm trying to think of why are people worried about this? Like, I guess... You know, with I thought about it. This is a weird example that I thought mm. of. So with the advances in uh, like robotics, and there's that company that makes like those dogs and stuff that and people that do backflips Boston, that are right. Boston uh, Dynamics. Dynamics. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just thought in the future, imagine if um, like those, but way more advanced, mm. and they already look crazily advanced. They they are powered by AI, which can kind of think for itself and utilize all the information out there on the internet to decide what it's doing. Mm. It could like run to a gun store and learn how to use a gun and pick it up and learn how to load it and shoot those people. Mm. Like, I don't know. I, I guess like that's that's the kind of concerning thing I think. But yeah. I have more faith in humanity that we're going to regulate this. Mm more strictly and it's going to be a more yeah. positive thing i don't know what I do suppose, you think uh, yeah a big so so he said about um people losing a lot of jobs and stuff mm. and i think so so i i wouldn't stop ai and kind of be like no we're never going to use ai because i think it has 
the potential to massively improve everyone's life on earth um because it can do things that currently takes lots of effort and people can hopefully focus on things that will improve all of our lives yeah. and bring us all fulfillment and happiness yeah. and help each other that's like a, obviously a very positive outlook on it what i think i agree with um Covey on is that um right now we're not prepared for it so currently the rate that it's moving shit loads of people are going to lose jobs because they're just mm. not needed anymore like that yeah and i don't think society we're prepared for that imagine just like 20 percent of people their jobs aren't needed anymore yeah. how do governments and countries and societies deal with that i think at the moment it would just be huge amounts of unhappiness yeah um and like mental health issues homelessness all this sort of thing where a portion of society just can't work anymore and then a portion of society are absolutely fine and i think it would be really bad so i think there needs to be time for us to plan how we deal with that before it happens mm -hmm. and like cubby said it's moving so fast now i don't think we have the time to kind of do that i mean weirdly it was we literally experienced something recently where we were working on a project for a new client and the client sacked a load of their staff when chat gpt was launched because of how it would change their business and like yeah. and that that's one example like I, I definitely think in the future but i, I don't know why I, I see it i still don't think it's going to be a negative thing overall like i think it's going to bring a lot of opportunity allowing people to to focus on the things that give them fulfillment like you mm -hmm. said rather than mundane tasks that could be automated mm -hmm. through ai like surely that's a positive thing yeah and i i still believe so in the long mm. term but i think there's short-term consequence and by short term i mean like in the next decade yeah so that's a long mm. period of t people's lives where it could cause some real pain and suffering for a lot of people mm. and i think that's what we need to prepare mm. for so it, we limit that cool well thanks cubby for that yes thank you very much so i'm gonna go straight into uh, another question that we've asked a uh, friend of the show and um, th now this person it's been the only guest we've ever had on the Business Angus podcast. <laughs> yeah. I think it was episode four or something like that. Um, and it's Robbie Knox, who is co-host of one of the UK's most popular podcasts, which is the Happy Hour podcast. Um, check it out if you're, you're not a listener already. And I asked Robbie, would you rather have a financially successful business in a boring industry or a mediocre business in a fun industry? And this is what he had to say. Hiya Dan, hiya Lloyd, hiya business people listening to the, the pod and all that. Um, I would say personally, probably go for the uh, decent business in an enjoyable industry. Uh, part of me does think, do the other one, just make lots of money. And if it's a really that good a business, you don't have to do much, just sit back and let someone else do it. But assuming you have to run it day to day, I would say um, interesting things. Because if you do, you're going to work all the time, you're going to want to... You're going to want to have fun, aren't you, sort of thing. So, yeah, that's perhaps unsurprisingly my view of things. Uh, but I'm keen to hear everyone else's. Interesting he went for an option that wasn't, uh, <laughs> did he say decent business? No, in well, a... he just used different words. Oh, I think okay. he, he, the, the mediocre business in uh, an interesting industry oh, okay. is what he went for. And I think this, I mean, in the last episode, we spoke about like work-life balance and mental health mm. a lot and stuff like that with founders. I think... This is interesting thinking about what, uh, you know, do you go for something that makes you the most money quickly? And mm. I guess maybe think about after work, like retirement, those benefits, or do you try and do something that's interesting and fun? And yeah, I would argue you that could you not find fun things that you enjoy within the uh, unfun industry one? Yeah, and I think like, lots I'd, of people manage to do it. Lots of mm. people run cleaning companies that really enjoy building. What's the wrong business. with cleaning companies? No, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> they really enjoy building that business. That the day-to-day -day work of, oh right, we need mm. to clean this toilet efficiently, to the outside world wouldn't be interesting and glamorous and fun. But there, I do think there are people that run those businesses and and actually very successful big financial business big financial business you know what i mean yeah um that are in what at the outside world might see as a more of a boring yeah. business yeah i would think of it more as how like happy i was at each of the businesses because i think you could like you yeah. say you could find fun things but like yeah 
being I mean, what what would be the most fun job in the world, do you reckon? For um, you, like if you could if you could literally do anything as yeah. a job, what I'd probably blow up dull tester. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um <laughs> <laughs> oh. joke that wouldn't be that'd be weird <laughs> um yeah the most enjoyable because i'm trying to yeah i'm just trying to wait up in my well, head you I know think, what you're trying to i think there's different things and there's some questions to some other people actually we've asked later in the episode that goes into this a bit more but it's thinking about like do you want a job that's fulfilling like no, not necessarily an exciting opportunity yeah. but like you feel fulfilled yeah or do you want something that financially is going to be good and then you can think about those other things you might want yeah. later um i do think it's mm. hard but like you said i think you can find your role interesting within a boring in a mm. <laughs> boring industry that sounds harsh mm. on boring industries um but you know people might find marketing boring what we do and i suppose mm. we find we make it fun we, we really enjoy what we do and there are big challenges but um we enjoy that i, I don't know just going over I don't know. So yeah, maybe maybe those boring industries you could still make a lot of money, build mm. a massive business in something that's not really exciting, but still enjoy yeah. what you do. Mm. Thanks for that, Robbie. Yes, thank you, Robbie. Um, do you have any questions you want to ask Dan, or shall I ask you a question? Uh, you ask me a question, and then I'll okay. ask you one. Okay. Um, if you had to choose between never being able to lie at work. Or never being able to eat at work, um, which would you choose? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the never being able to lie would cause a lot of issues. No, not lot like. So you're saying you lie to us? No, a lot? no, but like, yeah, you know, like sometimes you don't necessarily tell the entire truth because of people's feelings. <laughs> yeah, this was like, what I was thinking actually. It's like no, I'm not saying I come in and just completely lie, yeah. but. There's sometimes you want to sugarcoat things a little <laughs> bit. You're going to hurt people's feelings if they go, what do you think of this? And you go, dog shit. That is absolute <laughs> shite. Whereas, <laughs> whereas what you'd like to say is, oh, actually, I think that could be improved, but this bit's yeah. good. And uh, if you couldn't do that, I think that would be a horrible way to be, right? Yeah. And not eating at work. I feel like you, you get over that. You, you come up with a format where Basically you eat <laughs> intermittent fasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you just eat early and then eat before and after work. Um, uh, I've got one for you, Lloyd. Yeah. If you had to start again, like mm -hmm. this business, would you rather start in a different industry or would you stick with marketing and why? Or... I, well, I suppose sticking with marketing, I could use everything I've learned this time mm. and try and use that, I suppose, to build a business faster and more efficiently and be more financially viable earlier and that sort of thing. But just part of my personality, I really like trying new things. Mm. As you said, you reined me in. You said in a couple of, uh, a couple of episodes ago, I have all these mm. ideas and like chase these shiny things. I know that's, part of my personality but i do think it's because i enjoy that so i personally yeah. think i i would probably use skills that i've learned in building a business in marketing but in a different industry i think like in marketing obviously i feel very confident in marketing a really good product now mm. i feel like imagine developing a really fun interesting product and now using the skills we have in marketing to build that business mm. what, what do you think but you wouldn't you wouldn't have the skills so what? if we were to start again, yeah. Oh, okay. If we were to start again after this. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Okay. That changes well, that, That's it. how I thought that. Oh, I thought of yeah. it as in like, if you were starting again from scratch, you hadn't done this. Mm. I was going to say, if that was the case, I would still focus on marketing because those skills can be applied to so many different things. Mm. But if we were doing something after this, I'd probably do something different mm. to, to, cause it'd be more like not more interesting, but like trying something new once we've, yeah. Yeah just love trying new things i think mm. that's where you take risks you try new things that's where all the best things come mm. from so yeah. let's try something new now okay go on then all right what we're we gonna try we've never we've never asked martin alton a question oh on an i'm excited for this so um <laughs> martin alton for for new listeners is the father of me and dan dan, <laughs> and, I. dan and i describe <laughs> that in a very strange way um but uh, and I think he's quite pleased to be on this episode. And we asked Mark Knowlton, a.k.a. Dad, would you rather manage 100 employees and earn £250,000 a year 
or no employees and earn £50,000 a year. And this is what he said. Interesting question. Um, well, for me, I think it really depends on where you are in your career cycle. So when I was in my 30s, um, I was managing a business where there were about 200 people um, and had the energy to do it. Um, I wasn't earning 250,000, but, uh, and later on in life, I think that, uh, yeah, you're prepared to take uh, less income to have an easier life, really. So, yeah, I would say in my 30s, I would say 30s and 40s, yep, I would manage 100 people and get 250,000 a year. But later on in life, um, I would say uh, maybe 55, 65, I'd say 50,000 a year and uh, just look after yourself. Hope that helps. Thanks, guys. Good That's, answer. Yeah, that was a good answer. Interesting. So he focused... Something I probably wouldn't have thought of much, coming from the wisdom of Mark Knowlton, who's uh, turning 60 this year, mm. talk about like the energy levels and the motivation stages of in your life. stages in your mm. life. That's something I wouldn't have thought of. So basically, the age we are, he's saying, just earn more money and manage loads mm. of people if you if you could build a big business. But then later in in your life think about you know. it does make you think like the kind of journey for most people is work hard when you're younger build up a pot for your pension then you turn 60 or whatever or 65 70 then you retire and you can you know have fun mm. but like i don't know i always think like if you just focus on that and then you get to the end part, end part end third of your life and then you have yeah. fun you're going to be older have less energy i think it's the balancing thing of trying to Still do fun stuff. What, you're... So you're saying like in your thirties and forties, maybe don't go all out trying to earn 250,000 a year. Like yeah. you have somewhere in the middle that wasn't an option, by the way. <laughs> um, so that you can still have the balance of enjoying well, your life more and not just focusing on earning as much as you can. I guess it depends. If you could earn the 250,000 a year, manage the hundred people and still have time to do some fun stuff, mm. then yes. But I don't know if that would be the case. I don't know. Like we mentioned in previous episodes, think, you know, some things founders face and sacrifices, you know, f time to do things mm. with friends and family and relationships. Like, mm. I don't know, like even you hear, so you hear other very successful people, people like um, Stephen Bartlett on the Diary of CEO. He, uh, he talks a lot about, he sacrificed a huge amount to get where he is now. Like he sacrificed relationships with friends, romantic mm. relationships till he's now whatever, 30. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I just think if I did that, I wouldn't have found my fiance. I wouldn't have had my amazing kids and I wouldn't be in that position if I would have completely sacrificed all that other stuff yeah. to build like, you know, the next unicorn. That's... But then I suppose you could have lots of freedom now because you could do whatever you want if you've built that. I business. think also, obviously this is a made up question, but if you do have the opportunity between earning 50,000 or 250,000, huge amount of people would be saying, yeah, either of those sounds bloody brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I thought about that after I was listening and I was like, yeah. probably take the 50,000 look after myself. That sounds bloody <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I suppose I, I asked dad that mm. because he had the experience in his 30s mm. of managing uh, a huge amount of people. And it, I know now that it was very stressful. Mm. Um, I thought it was interesting. He's always had, you know, when we started this business, he was encouraged us not to employ people. I think after that experience, yeah. because he was thinking, God, it's stressful employing yeah. people. Try and just look after yourselves. And we obviously went against that advice a bit. But mm. And you can see, like, even with a small team, there are, it is stressful making sure you're paying everyone's mm. wages and that you're looking after people and, and balancing everything. But Quick, fun Mark Knowlton story. Mm. Um, when I first uh, went to a... I went to a networking event with dad mm. years ago, years and years ago, when, just before starting the business for you. Um, I remember he, he, he knew it was like to do with his business and he was meeting lots of people at this charity event. Yeah. And he told me before, do not call me dad when we're there. Call me Mark. <laughs> right. And imagine for 30 or 25 years at the time I'd been calling him dad. <laughs> I had a couple of beers at this thing and I just kept calling him dad by accident in front of <laughs> Dad. Dad, you're Johnny Agabon, Dad. Call me Mark. <laughs> no, I get where he's coming from. He was just, yeah. He didn't, he didn't want it to look like, But I you think know. we spoke to him about this recently and his point, I think, was he wanted you to seem like you're my standing person, on your own two feet. If someone's like, Dad, I'll come with my dad to this business. Event. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like, oh, you're just, yeah. you're just here with your dad and work but experience. It is a struggle when you've had a couple of beers to... Yeah. 
call someone a name that's different to what you've called them before? Um, Should we just next, do another? Next question. Yeah. Um, I actually asked Paul Wilkinson this, a um, good friend of mine, but uh, the voice note sounded like he was in a toilet cubicle or something, so I won't play it. But the question was, if it provided the same financial re reward, would you rather have a business that was stressful but fulfilling or stress-free and unfulfilling? So basically like yeah. a really stressful job, but you felt at the end of it like, oh, okay, yeah, I feel for, like I'm doing decent stuff. This is worth doing. Or you're completely stress-free, but you're kind of like... Mm, I'd, go sh I'd go stressful and fulfilling. Mm. I think being fulfilled is more important than being stress-free. I value you know that more. What? I would, like I the, would yeah. probably, although I really try and advocate like not having mm. a stressful life and trying to do things to make sure you don't. I kind of agree. Like just doing a job that you don't give a shit about and you feel mm. is adding nothing mm. to anyone, but you're not stressed. I think it's kind of like a, I don't know, you can get into a negative headspace with yeah. that. Well, interestingly, I will share what Paul mm. said. Thank you, Paul. Um, I don't know if you were having a poo at the time, but it sounded like you were. Um, <laughs> but Paul said, um, if it provided the same financial rule... Oh, no, that's the question. Um, <laughs> said he, he was more focused on working towards a wider goal that he believed in rather than day-to-day -day fulfillment, um, which is a very millennial answer, I think. So basically that feeling of like, even if day to day you're not feeling like, oh, that was really worth mm. doing and stuff. It, but if you're working towards a goal that you really believe in mm. in the long term, he said that's what he feels is the nice. most important thing. Um, and he also shared that he, I won't say the business he worked for, but he tried going through, because Paul's worked for a number of agencies and really helped them grow and stuff. He tried going for a stress-free, less fulfilling job. And uh, his exact words in the voice note were, he got so fucking bored and left. <laughs> so I do think there's that thing. Yeah. Even if you're like, I'm earning a decent amount, yeah. like, this isn't stressful. I think without feeling like you're adding to something. Yeah, and, yeah it, is, it is tough. Interesting. Um, Have you got any points on that? As in what, what you'd prefer? What would you prefer? Oh, it's hard for me because like I said, I, mm. I really don't like saying have a stressful job because I think stress yeah. is not good in general. But I, I think maybe like you said, not being fulfilled in any way. And by, by the way, being fulfilled doesn't mean like you come to work every day and be like, oh my God, this is heaven. Mm. Oh, this is the best thing ever. Like all of our employees do when yeah, they like work all, Yeah, all of our team obviously come into work and say that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean like as in you've got parts of your job where you're like, oh, like, like I suppose work in our something workplace, cool. Like, oh, that's like quite creative and I enjoyed doing that. Or like, um, oh, I found that challenging, but like once I managed to get this done, I felt mm. quite good and I feel like I've achieved something or, oh, it's good I'm progressing what I'm learning here mm. and I'm having new experiences. That's what I kind of mean by yeah. fulfillment, not just, not like this like utopia of like, oh my God, it's so good working at the chocolate tasting factory. <laughs> oh, I've, I've met so many, met so many chocolates. <laughs> anyway. Um, weird, weird flex. Yeah. Right, next one. Uh, not accidentally, completely intentionally, I asked, asked a couple of people the same question here. Right, okay. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this was planned. But um, first, let's hear from Harry Hugo, who, um, for those of you who don't know, um, co-founder of the GOAT agency with two other founders, um, recently, uh, was it acquired or, or merged with a much bigger business and all very successful. Mm. Well done, Harry. Very, very proud of you. Don't know why I said that as if you're my son. <laughs> um, and I asked him, there's a bit of a theme here with some of these questions, but would you start a business you were pa passionate about or would you start a business that was most financially rewarding in the quickest time if he was to start again? Mm. And so this is obviously from someone that's uh, just done very well, I think, mm. financially and <laughs> built a big business. So let's hear from Harry. Hello. Hello there. Yeah, um, exciting couple of weeks. Um, exciting couple of years, really. And, and you guys are flying as well, which is great to see. Love the podcast. Well done. Um, I love the fact you've stood the test of time on doing things differently and doing them well. So, first of all, f wicked work to you and to Dan. Um, in terms of uh, the question, I'd 100% choose something I'm passionate about. Um, I've been fortunate enough to do that through 
my limited career of uh, two businesses so far. Um, and I'd also stress that doing something you're passionate with other people that you're passionate about being around and they're also sharing those values. I'd find it very difficult to go into a business on my own. Um, but definitely would never, ever, ever set out to make loads of money. If you're passionate about something, there's a good chance that will follow. Good answer. Yeah, interesting. So gone for the passion thing, but sort of saying he thinks the money will follow. Yeah. And also commenting on doing it with people that you want to do it with. Yeah, that does make sense. Like you, like working, we spend so much time with people at work. Like to enjoy it, you want to be with people that are on the same path as you and yeah. actually want to be there rather than... I hadn't, it's, it obviously sounds simple and obviously I work with you and my brother who I enjoy <laughs> and all the guys we work with here. But yeah, I hadn't kind of thought about that people side of it's actually more of a consideration doing it with people that you like being around. Yeah. I think we both had it, careers in the past where we've worked with people who we maybe didn't get on with so well and yeah. it, the feeling of going to work every day knowing that they're going to be there sucks. Yeah. Um, as it's the same question, let's quickly hear from Adam Barry, co-founder of Electric House, um, a big agency based in... Are they in Birmingham now? Uh, I think so. Leicester? I think it's Birmingham. Leeds. <laughs> to us, anything north of London is a foreign land. Yeah, they're lovely but, chaps, though. Yes, let's hear from Adam Barry. Long-time listener, first-time caller of the podcast. Um, yeah, I would definitely choose something that I was passionate about, Um because I just think it's more satisfying. And I think when we started the business, my finger slipped off the button. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to have to start again, aren't I? But as I was saying, I definitely do something I was passionate about. Well, I think some people are passionate about making as much money as possible. So if that's what you're passionate about, then you kind of tick both boxes. Um, but if I was to start again, I'd definitely do something I was passionate about um something that was more fulfilling and something that was giving back over the money because we all know there's lots of people out there with lots of money who are bitterly unhappy very true yes um yeah i, I think he's right mm. like there's lots of very traditionally successful people i've met that aren't happy yeah so i suppose finding something that's going to make you happy and stuff rather than just chasing the money um, fun fact about um, adam barry yeah we went to the an, On The Tools Awards once. Do you remember? There's a picture of you carrying yes. him like a child. Yes. I, I wasn't sort of thinking he was like a child at that point. I was just carrying him like a human, really. It looked like it. Um, yes, we did. Um, yeah. I, I I think it's hard, like it's interesting you said about some people are passionate about making the most money mm. they can. And I do think some people, some people's passion is they really enjoy like the challenge of building a business like mm -hmm. that is almost like a hobby mm -hmm. like how can i make this business grow and make money and stuff mm -hmm. and like that's what they're passionate about and really interests them so i think like he said some people have that as something that really drives them mm -hmm. i think there's an extent with our business growth of that with me like the kind of journey of building a business i find mm -hmm. enjoyable um I, I get a buzz when we bring on a new client and as, as revenue glow, grows and the team grows like yeah. it's i think feel like it's a buzz because we've we've put all this work in figured out how to do it and then that's the end point of another like sort of uh just a good feeling of yeah we've yeah. won a new client and we're going towards what we want to yeah. go towards because i i i feel like i wouldn't want to say for me oh go for the financial one because i mm. think, think that makes you sound like a horrible business person mm. that doesn't give a shit about anything else but I suppose if I'm honest, like, like I'm saying, there's an element of like the enjoying building a business and like mm. learning how to do that. that I do enjoy yeah. And Obviously that is around financial stuff. Mm. Um, but then at the same time, I think my future plans, I like Adam said, would like to do something more that has more giving back mm. and a feeling like you're part of something that's really helping people. I feel like that would be really fulfilling too. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Thank you, Harry Hugo from the Goat Agency and Adam Barry from Electric House. Who, who else have we got, Lloyd? So, shall we hear from Biz Paul? <laughs> yes. Um, Biz Paul has a proper name. <laughs> uh, Paul Ince from Like Mind Media. Um, and I asked Biz Paul, would you rather have a business you can run solely from home without meeting anyone else? So easy. You're just at home. You don't have to meet anyone chill in your pajamas or would you 
run a business where you had to be in the office around other people for at least 40 hours a week. This is what Biz Paul, aka Paul Ince, had to say. I would rather spend time in the office surrounded by people than spend time with myself. I would be sick of myself. I'm sick of myself already. I'm sick of the sound of my own voice. I need people. I would rather be in an office. Thank you very much. I I have to agree with him. Mm. I think the same. I think um, during COVID, this whole rise of working from home and everything, and it made people realize how they can be more efficient. You don't have to, you know, travel to meet people and that kind of thing. But I, for me, a huge factor of enjoying coming to work is the people I'm around Mm. and interacting with them and, feeling like you're on on a journey together, that togetherness. Yeah. I don't know, you don't really get that if you're just at home on your own. Even if you do it on Zoom and you catch mm-hmm. up and all that stuff, it's not the same. I think we spoke about it in the last episode about like relationships being a massive part of like keeping your mental health going and general happiness in, you know. And I do think it's hard to do that if you're not meeting people day to day. There's something, I feel like there's something certainly in my brain, like a box that gets ticked of like, Good human interaction. <laughs> we, can, we can be happy for another day. Yeah. I feel like if if I go a couple of days without that, yeah. I do something does happen in my head that goes, oh, maybe we should be unhappy for a bit. Do you reckon? <laughs> um, so I yeah, I'd agree. And I know a lot of people. Well, I think the tide's turning a bit. I think people after lockdown and stuff were like, mm. everyone's going to be working from home, and it feels like it's switching back a bit. I agree. And I do think there's some. There is an element where people are like, this is horrible corporations forcing people to go in the office. But I do think I'm seeing more and more messaging around kind of what I'm thinking, which is more that mental side of like, it it works for people mentally to be around other Mm. people and cutting that out completely and us all just working in our own little home offices in flats. Mm is that a positive thing in in general it's the balance isn't it because of the practicalities of you know you might need to take the kids to school one day or you've got a doctor's appointment and it's having that balance of Mm -hmm. it's just annoying if you're forced to go into the office and then to make that really inconvenient for you but at the same time Mm -hmm. you need to have those human interactions i think more flexible work is probably here to stay Mm -hmm. like it used to be if someone's like oh my kid's got a dentist appointment be like oh bloody hell yeah yeah, uh, well, what you expect that to have have it off, do that's well, what you have like to make now, up the time when everyone else, or yeah, anything like which that. is I uh, completely agree. <laughs> um, whereas now I think it's much more like I think most employers are more understanding, like everyone has lives outside <laughs> yeah. of work, and it's like you know, that optician appointment might not mm. be able to happen at a weekend, or you, you might need to do this, or you might just want to go to your mm. children's sports day and rather than it be like I have to, yeah. someone might just want to and that's a reasonable thing yeah. for someone to go and do um, so I think fle- more flexible mm. work is here to stay but I do think personally I need to be around yeah. people. I think people forget the value of people being happy at work and the you know thinking just practically for the business the benefit, Yeah, they're happier they're enjoying what they're doing more so they will put in extra effort, they will deliver better work um, yeah and yeah, they're happier. So you're doing the right thing. Let's hear from a Knowlton client, uh, Joe from Buy Whole Foods Online. So I asked Joe. Uh, so Joe runs Buy Whole, Food, Whole Foods Online and is a co-founder there. And um, they sell basically every whole food, food project you can Im- project <laughs> <laughs> whole food product you can imagine. <sighs> They sell lots of lovely, healthy stuff and they have a big focus on kind of trying to do the right thing for the planet as well. Very good ethical company and trying to find recyclable and compostable packaging, all that sort of thing. Really interesting business. Head to buyhealthfoodsonline.co.uk if you want to check it out. Um, But I asked Joe, um, if you had a magic wand to provide you with either new customers every day or provide you with new exciting prod- products every day, which magic wand would you choose to have? And the lovely Joe had this to say. Hey Lloyd. Um, yeah, I think uh, I would say new customers, a magic wand for new customers, because like, uh, I mean, with obviously food products, um, we're, we're all the time 
new products come and the, the most the, the basics are the things that are always there um I, as a product we're constantly trying to add new things that really enhance some of this but that's we're always having creative ideas for that it's more a question of having the resources and time to actually implement the list of things that we want to improve and features we want to add to the customer experience but so for a magic wand i would choose if i could choose a magic wand to be able to get all the features we wanted to improve done instantly i would choose that one over either but between those two i think new customers interesting i think a lot of business owners um they have lots of ideas on how to improve their business mm. but they don't always have lots of ideas in how to actually get new customers and market and mm. sell what they do um i think that the, the bringing on the magic wand to get new customers will, will bring on so much more opportunity because it will help the business grow it'll help you make more money help you invest back into the business give you more time resource people that you could hire to help you implement those um those it's things that an you interesting mentioned. metaphor like if you could find a magic wand that would help you get more customers um you know maybe you've been listening to the co-founders of a business that <laughs> could almost act like a magic wand to help you find new customers. the magic Knowlton wand <laughs> <laughs> did you plan uh, that <laughs> no i didn't but yeah it's i i think the two sides of businesses of like improving your own product products or services mm and then finding the customers for those. It's two like massively different challenges. And I guess different different businesses struggle with either, but I don't know. I, I think I'd, it's weird. I'd choose to have the magic one to find new customers because I find it really enjoyable, like improving our business and like our mm. service offering and that kind mm. of thing. So I'd be happy to keep working hard on that. But then I suppose that's because maybe it's not my skill set. Mm. Like your skill set's more sales and marketing. So maybe you'd want the magic yeah. wand yeah. give us that magic wand yeah all right right, will do um any more questions dan or have you had enough uh <laughs> had enough that's not how you should end the <laughs> episode is it i think that's good i think i think that's a good amount of questions and okay well thank you very much for everyone that's contributed to that episode really appreciate your time um and we hope you've enjoyed that anchors if you've enjoyed hearing from other people other than me and dan please let us know we won't dan be offended Dan and I. Um, <laughs> thank you, Dan. Always there to correct my grammar <laughs> in public. Greatly appreciated. Um, yeah, let us know any of your feedback if you've enjoyed that episode or if you haven't. <laughs> uh, that'd be good too. Yeah. Um, but I hope you'll be back next week whether you enjoyed it or not. So we will see you in your ears, ears next, next week. week.